Hello and welcome to Pizer Media's tournament coverage of the 2023 Book Miller Super Thriller, where the Book Miller Park is turned into a monster of a course. We have island holes, alternate pin positions, brand new holes that aren't normally on the course at all, and a lot of out of bounds. I'm Dave Oster, here to bring you today's commentary. Quick thank you to our presenting sponsors, Cosmic Disc Golf, D-Town Disc Golf, and Reaper Disc Supply. We have an exciting five-person card today, a couple of local Lancaster boys in Ethan Hine and Jerry Dyson, both on coverage last year for Book Miller Super Thriller. The lefty forehander, righty backhander, Eric Mowell, tied for second, shooting four down, thousand right around. First timer to our channel, Rob Becky, shooting one down, tied for fourth with the highlight king himself, Remy Millar. This tournament is also the conclusion to the Red Rose Roundup series, and we can see three of the top ten on the leaderboard are on our card today. So a lot to play for here on this tournament. Let's get started for this final round here on hole one. Par three, 275 feet. T-pad moved a little bit further to the right compared to last year, shooting through a double mando to a green surrounded by out of bounds. Any missed mando or out of bounds shot will proceed to the drop zone. Ethan Hine, your current leader for the tournament and for the series, up first. Beautiful straight shot, just a little bit of fade. Looks like that'll be a good way to start this second round. Jerry Dyson, just one stroke back. Goes with a little bit more of a turnover, flexing back towards the pin. Looks like it's stopped a little bit short, maybe skipped up to the pin, should be in the circle. Eric Mal going with a similar line. And skips just around that tree, should be in the circle as well. Rob Becky going a little bit higher, a little bit flippier, fading out at the end but should still be near the circle. And Remy Millar looks like he's going for a little bit of the water line, starting left side of the tee pad. Ooh, bit too wide, and that is going to be out of bounds. So four of the five players, great shot. Remy can definitely get up and down from the drop zone here. Tricky drop zone. Obviously, it's still out of bounds all around the pin. Tricky to run if you were trying to save your par, so if you don't make it, you're pretty much getting up and down for your bogey. And if Jerry is the furthest out, it's looking like the rest of this card is going to have some pretty easy putts. Nice putt by Rob. Hole one was coming in at about a quarter stroke under par, fourth easiest. The course overall is playing obviously much harder than it normally would if you've played this normal layout, either the normal baskets or the alternate. Shout out to Sean Conroy from Elevated Discs and his entire crew for setting this course up every year. It's a great event. Love coming to cover this one. Hole 2 is a par 4, 544 feet, playing as a double island hole. 
So landing around here will give you your first island and then the basket all the way down to the right of the pickleball courts around the corner will be your second island that you have to land in. This is a new pin position for this year. It was on the first island just down the hill on the left side. This is a nice change, making it just a little bit harder. Another par four on the course. Ethan Hine goes just up around the tree, catching a couple branches of a landing inbounds. Should have a fairly easy straight approach. Jerry taking it just a bit wider and gets down there. You can see that short pin playing to the right of the first out of bounds line. And Eric just barely getting across the line. Definitely kind of a stock hyzer for these guys for the first shot, but it's more of a placement shot. You see, they're probably throwing just mid range or putter, get around the corner. The difficulty of this hole is that they execute kind of the two short shots into the landing zones and not super difficult types of shots, but you have to do it and then make your putt. So all five players do make it inbounds around the corner. And they'll be setting up for their approach shots across the out-of-bounds into the next island. Rob going right at it, and great shot. A little bit more fade that could have given the basket a scare. There is a hill behind the basket giving you a little bit of a backstop. So going right for it is not a bad play. And you go a little bit more of a hyzer route. It's a little bit long, but again, that's probably the play. Don't want to leave it short. There's Eric with the forehand. Same spin as everybody else in the car's backhand. You see the players really couldn't go too far. Ethan getting just short of the end of the island. Ooh, good line by Jerry as well. So everybody within the circle, a couple of downhill putts coming up. Amy posing for the camera before his putt. And a little band, but it goes in. So it makes up for the bogey he got on the hole one and back to where he started. And just a little bit high. For Eric, this being a temporary basket, the band a little bit thinner than you'd see in the rest of the baskets here, uh, causing his dad to skip and go about the same distance past as it was, and chaining out a couple of unfortunate putts for Eric. Current leader, Ethan. Keeping pace with Jerry, keeping one stroke ahead, down to seven on the par. Rob also starting with two birdies. So the unfortunate bogey for Eric, the rest birdies, and we'll move over to hole three. Another par four, 430 feet if you're familiar with the course, we're playing to the alternate pin for normal hole seven. Pass all this down the hill and to the single chain basket down there. OB left and right and a mando left to keep you from going towards the tee pad for four. Ethan going forehand. Little low but misses the trees so he should have a clean approach. And pretty much no matter where you land the approach is going to be blind. 
having the basket down the hill. Only being 430 feet, this is potentially reachable, but probably not something you want to go for. This isn't a bad play if you do want to get a little more distance, having the low ceiling. Don't want it to curl too much, but that does curl up in time to stay in bounds. Typically, the big forehand hyzer play is a play around the tree to the left. The players wanted to push a little bit more and maybe even a little bit to the right. That's also a bounds around the Mando. Um, this straight play is more the play for today. Definitely more room to the right if you get past the Mando. There is out of bounds if you go too far. Um, but that's kind of the play. Kind of sets up the angle a little bit better. Eric also going with the roller. Bumps up off the route but gets a lot of distance. We'll see what it looks like once we get down there. So, Ethan going past the normal basket for this hole. Also to the right of this Mando, and down the hill, probably 250 or so feet from there. Obviously playing downhill, so Ethan probably threw a putter or mid-range. Ooh, Rob catching a tree right at the top of the hill, kicking right. It'll leave him with a long, maybe long bit at it. A short approach. Maybe just floating one down there, knows where the basket is, just has to get it to sit down. Uh, Jerry and Eric with their rollers might actually be able to see the top of the basket. At the very least, walk up a little bit and be able to see it. Air shots are tough to get this far, but the rollers can definitely get there. Getting onto the low ceiling. And yeah, Rob, probably edge of circle two, kick down right at the top of the hill. A little bit, a little low. Good decision though, these are the alternate baskets. This hole is playing to an alternate basket, which as you can see is the single chain. Not easy to stick in, especially if you have some speed. A second birdie in a row by Raimi, after the bogey start on hole one. Three in a row for Jerry. Good bounce back birdie for Eric. First par for Ethan. Letting Jerry catch him and tie him up. Still a lot of, go lot of golf left, obviously. But we have a tie for the lead. Thanks to BS Upshot Tournaments and Shops for sponsoring this hole. Par four, hole four, par three, only 177 feet. You have to get over the snow fence wall onto the island is also out of bounds left and Jerry hitting the wall but kind of pushing it the out of bounds line is stake to stake so he may just barely be in bounds obviously players trying to get up and over the wall usually very short hole but fairly tight island and downhill a lot of roots on the ground so tricky hole even though it is under 200 feet Ramey skipped left, but did not go out of bounds, so he should have a putt. Great shape. Taking the wide route, hoping for the skip towards the basket. Looked like it did so. And obviously we're seeing short enough that... Most of these players just going with the standstill. Ethan just going straight, kind of staple putter. Catches a little branch. Stopped him from probably being within 10 feet, but he'll probably have a, a circle's edge or 30 foot or so putt. Not going a little bit lower, and that looked like it was a great shot.
So taking a look, and it looks like Jerry was in bounds. So he will take his meter away from the fence and have about as long of a look as you can on this island. 40 feet or so. Decides just to lay up. There is out of bounds behind the basket. Pretty close as well, so smart play for Jerry. Oh, just a bit low. Looked good. Tough to commit with that out of bounds line behind, like I said. A little bit downhill, tried to float it in there, but good bid nonetheless. Ethan with a nice birdie, getting that stroke back from Jerry. And Ramey barely in bounds. You can see the green flags right there. Taking his relief and getting a birdie. Eric also very close to the out of bounds line. Probably be saying that a lot today, as that's kind of the whole point of this tournament and the course is adding a lot of difficulty to an otherwise pretty easy course. And Jerry and Rob will be tapping in their pars. Over to hole 5, par 3, 390 feet. This is also an island hole with a optional drop zone, so you can lay it up to maybe 150 to 200 feet or so, and you have to pass over an out of bounds area that is maybe 100 feet wide or so, going straight towards the pin, and then opens up as you go to left. So you don't have a bailout zone, you have to lay up or you have to make it on the island. And Ramey goes a little bit right, cut rolls, but lands on the island. Going first always is the trickiest, trying to decide on the wind. And Eric goes intentional roller. And pops back up right by the basket. Great roller. He'll have an inside the circle look. Forehand play, usually a common play for this hole. Uh, and no reason why it wouldn't work today as well. Coming into the hillside, he lands a little bit higher on the hill so he gets that skip. Usually, if you hit left of the hill, you can kind of dig in and sit right there. Jerry also going roller, but does not roll back up the hill, so he will unfortunately be going to the edge of the out-of-bounds line where he last went out and have maybe 150 to 200 foot approach. Rob going flex forehand. The right side up on the island is the bailout side. It's pretty big up there. But it'll leave you a long approach, obviously. Ooh, good run by Jerry. Trying to save the par or just get it close for his bogey. And you can see about as far on the island as you can get. Far away from the basket, that is. Giving it a little bit of a bid. Also, it slopes down severely behind the basket. So you have to be careful not to go too far past it. And Eric inside the circle after that roller, yeah, and caches the birdie. Just a little low. Jerry also staring down the hillside back to the out of bounds. Maybe just a little timid for that putt. I'll be getting the unfortunate double. And 
and Ethan, even though we got the par, will still be gaining strokes on Jerry. Um, Eric now in second place, just one stroke back. Over to hole six, thanks to Jersey Discs for sponsoring this hole. Our first par five, 679 feet. Drones flying inbounds the entire way. This road and across is out of bounds. Players will decide to play over it, either the first or the second shots. Um, rollers also play on the second shots, being in low ceiling, playing all the way to normal eights basket up the road. So, very cool hole design. And you'll see players kind of broke the tee shot, but I don't think it really ruins this hole too much playing over the, the road. I think it might actually be part of the design. So I won't quite say that it was broken, but definitely not the typical play for this hole. First two players executing. Rob trying to match it. It's a little bit wider, but gets through, gets that skip. Being an under 700 foot par 5 with uh, the road play, a little bit dangerous, but definitely gives you the airspace. This is an eagleable hole. All right. So four of our five players playing the same route around the outside. Make that five out of five. And five out of five inbounds. So from here we can see there is a low ceiling play over the road or you can stay inbounds making a play a little bit longer. Yep. Or kind of the intermediate play, what Jerry just did. Throw the baby hyzer, not trying to get to the basket, but using the space over the road to progress down the fairway. Jeremy looks like he'll be doing the same thing. Ooh, catching a branch. Looks like he was actually maybe given a little bit more. Catches the edge of the road and skips back inbounds. Ethan landing right behind this tree, so not quite able to take the road route. Deciding to go roller instead. And puts it down in a fairly nice spot. Needs to start curling back. And it does. That should give him a pretty open approach to normal eights fairway. Maybe under 150 feet. Oh, Rob pulled that one. Not able to come back inbounds, unfortunately. So he will be taking it right where he went out. So just a few feet forward of where he crossed the road there. Eric. Going roller and great roller. Probably similar to where Ethan wound up. So Rob with essentially a stroke and distance type penalty. Progresses a few feet forward. But will now be throwing four, I believe. And kind of pulls it again. It has some stability. Gets a good road skip, and he will be within the circle to save his par. So, a couple of wide shots, but hopefully no harm, no foul. Get out of this hole with a par. Jerry took it pretty wide as well. Oh, and doesn't get the skip in the roll. That will be out of bounds. Fortunately, he did cross like three quarters through his flight, so he'll be able to... Progress most of the way forwards. And Ethan and Eric in layup zones over there on normal 8's fairway. I take that back. Alright, there was a bit of a layup. Maybe a little bit of a run for Ethan. Tough to say. His jump putts can sometimes look like they're going in. Sometimes they're layups. Definitely seen him on the channel before make some long bids. And good par save by Rob. A 
So we're going to be getting a bunch of birdies here. But I do have to shout out one player in the second round who was able to get the three. Daniel Seidel. Congrats to him. Definitely doable, but he was the only one to do it this round. So I'll shout out to him. Over to hole 7, par 4, 523 feet. Thanks to Darkside Disc Golf Dies for sponsoring this hole. There are three pins on this hole. We're playing to the one, two, three pins down through these woods here, out to the opening. Pretty tricky hole, out of bounds on the left and the right side, playing from further back than normal nines tee pad. So there's a couple different plays you can play. Eric playing the aggressive play, trying to get out and around the corner. Um, set himself up for maybe uh, a shorter approach or this play just get past this one tree in the fairway left side preferable to set up more of a straight shot and try to get aggressive on your second shot maybe yeah. taking a bit wide but use yep. ability to disc get back oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and you can see him sweating it for just a second but landing in a good layup zone This is definitely a pretty interesting hole with all the out-of-bounds, and you'll see later it gets very narrow the further out down the fairway eight. you get. Okay, just get around it. A nice flex forehand for Rob. Looks like he landed inbounds further down the fairway, so. Um, but as I was saying, it gets real tight down by the, the second basket and then back out in the open for the third, so. Tricky to get all the way through, especially if you're trying to go for it from further back, like the guys who laid up. So, um, pretty much just trying to punch into the woods. Honestly, there is out of bounds if you kick too far, so I have to be cautious of that. But Ethan and Jerry seem to have made it in there fairly well. Eric a little bit further on the right side, so he's going to have to go with that turnover forehand. And kicks kind of into the woods a little bit further. He'll have a tricky third, but should be able to see the basket from there. And you see a little bit more left side. It's a bit straighter of a shot. We still can't see the final pin. It's further around and through. And Rob actually, with the furthest approach, Gets pretty far through there. Kick some trees, hit hit a branch or two, but he'll have maybe a circle two look. And Eric trying to just get sneaky through those woods. Doesn't quite make it all the way through. He's probably about where Jerry is now. And that was a pretty good bid. A couple of branches knocked it down, but that was on a good line. Ethan has a straight shot at it. Oh, just a bit wide. It doesn't quite look like it, but it is a slight downhill here. And I believe the long grass is out of bounds, so running it is a little tricky as well. So Ramey lined up perfectly, except for the branches right in front of him. Just tickles him, but takes it a bit too wide. So Rob closer to circle's edge than circle two. And nice putt to save the par. So everybody out into the opening now. If Ethan's the farthest from here, everybody should be cleaning up their putts. Hole 7 coming in is the fourth hardest hole at almost three quarters of a stroke over par. So all the out of bounds, probably more so making players not go for it than really adding out of bounds strokes. But then getting through the woods and then out into this tight landing zone. All just kind of adding up to a higher stroke percentage.
So I think Eric must have had an out of bounds stroke or two in there to get that double bogey. But we'll move over to hole eight, par three, 305 feet. There is an out of bounds island short of the short pin. So if you land in there, you actually have to come back short of it. Essentially, you have to get all the way across it or wind up in the woods either side to not be out of bounds. The ideal shot, of course, is just playing normal hole 10 up and to the long basket behind the big tree. This is looking pretty good, getting sneaky left side. And yeah, Remy's outside, maybe pin high left. Grab going a bit more of a flex shot. It does get past that out of bounds, just barely getting close to our right now catch cam operator, Anthony. And Jerry getting just about up to that tree. That's probably close to circle two. Eric a little bit wider. Kicks down. Looks like he is still short of the out of bounds. So won't have a penalty stroke, but we'll still have a long approach. And this is Ethan from the left side. And yeah, that'll be a 30-footer to save his par. Eric choosing to go forehand, and very good choice. Puts it to tap in distance. So, very long look for Rob for his birdie. He's got the height. Oh, just a bit too much height off the band. Dead center looked like. Great bid for Rob. Ramey also for birdie. Just a bit left. So now Jerry to save his par from, call it, 30 feet. And a bit low. Again, playing to these single chain baskets, these players know that they are notorious for not catching discs. So I've heard that some players will even change up their putting style to try to have it deliver more softly. Um, that, of course, will result in potentially a few lower deliveries. Thank you to Raimi for jumping out of the way so we could see that one. Always nice when players are aware that our cameras are here. Love to show these players, but when they're blocked by others, we can't. Over to the final hole in this front nine. Par 3, 450 feet, out of bounds left side all the way, all the way down to normal 11's alternate pin. I believe the tee was on the right side of this tree last year, going for backhands. Now it looks like forehand line is the play, either super wide, or you can go more straight at it under that branch. and. Ethan takes it too wide. That is going to be out of bounds. And you'll take it where you went out of bounds. So he's probably only going to progress about 100 or 120 feet. Amy a little bit more inside. And curls back in nicely. Still very far. It is downhill, but 450 feet for a par 3. Easily the longest par 3 here. Difficult to really trust that disc over the out of bounds, getting the flex that you need to. And Rob trusted it just a bit too much. Goes out of bounds and curls, but not quite enough. Looks like Jerry is lining up a backhand roller just around that branch. Is curling back and bounds. Very nice. Right to the crest of that hill. Basket's quite a bit further than that. Kind of that false front optical illusion. Probably still has 150 or so in. 
Eric also going with the roller more inside. That needs to miss that out of bounds, and I think it lands in there under that big pine tree. So he'll take it from the right side, have a short approach from there. Ethan throwing three. And sit, needs to sit, and just does. So he'll be long right of the pin with still some work to do to save his bogey. Ooh, and Rob gets his little nose up and lands in the out-of-bounds bunker right side. So two out-of-bounds strokes for Rob and still, again, circle's edge are further from the basket there um, to try to still get up and down maybe. Use of his left arm definitely coming into play there for Eric, getting around those branches. Right-handed, backhand, or forehand would have had to kind of deal with that being on the right side. That works out well. Randy with the best drive of everybody. Had a look at it, but doesn't quite connect on the putt. Probably a little bit closer than I actually thought. He'll have a decent look at it. Oh, and just spits out. Hitting low on these chains and kind of kick back up. You see these baskets not only have single chains, but a shallow basket. Looked like he might have kicked and come up back out of it. Ethan to save his bogey. And great putt. Just off center of the pole. This, that is a uh, a good spot to hit. One of the only baskets that dead center middle isn't the sweet spot if you're putting hard. Um, chain's not quite enough to slow your disc down enough to not bounce off the pole and kick back out. So tough hole for this lead card. Playing about a half a stroke over par, so. Typical with the field, but that will do it on the front nine of this final round of both the Book Miller Super Thriller and the Red Rose Roundup Series. Nine holes to go, so stay tuned to see the conclusion of both of those. Thanks to the Norse Gods for supporting our coverage as well as our Patreon family. Like I said, nine holes to go, and the back nine, I believe, is the tougher of the two nines on this layout. A couple of holes that you've never seen if you haven't watched coverage or been to the Super Thriller, so be sure to tune into the back nine. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next hole.